Hello everyone, this is Darsh Italia. Welcome to my channel, Darshonium. In my last video, I had promised that we would be learning the beautiful history behind the making of the modern periodic table. Today, we would be learning the first theory of Dobereiner's law of triads. In order to learn something, we need to answer three important questions. That is why, when and how. So let us answer the question why there was a need for this theory. By the year 1700, only a hand few of elements were identified and isolated. Some of these elements were copper, iron, sulphur, silver, which were known to man since ancient times. But later there were many more elements discovered and hence scientists found the need to classify all of these elements in a systematic way. Initially, on the basis of the properties, these elements were classified into metals and non-metals. But there were some elements which possessed the properties of both metals as well as non-metals which are called as metalloids. And hence, this method could not be used. And hence, scientists needed to find out some other way in which they can classify all of these elements in order to make their study easy. So now let us answer the next two questions that is when and how. In the year 1817, Johann Wolfgang Dobereiner, a German chemist, found that the three elements can be grouped together on the basis of their similar chemical and physical properties. He arranged these three elements in the increasing order of their atomic masses and called these three elements in a group as a triad. And hence this law got the name Dobereiner's law of triads. Now let us learn the statement of Dobereiner's law of triads. The law states that the atomic mass of the middle element in a triad is approximately equal to the mean of the atomic masses of the other two elements. I have underlined the key words that you need to memorize in order to remember the whole statement easily. So now let us take an example of a triad. In this triad, there are three elements, lithium, sodium and potassium. The atomic masses of all of these three elements are 6.9, 23 and 39.1 respectively. As you can see, I have arranged the three elements in the increasing order of their atomic masses. So now let us take the mean of the atomic masses of the first and the third element here. The first element is lithium and the third element is potassium. The masses of them are 6.9 and 39.1 respectively. So on taking the mean, that is on adding them, I will get 39.1 plus 6.9 which equals to 46 and divided by 2. So 46 divided by 2, I will get 23. Now the mean of the first and the third element is 23 and the mass of the middle element that is sodium is 23. In this example, we can see that the mean and the mass of the middle element, they both are equal and hence this triad obeys the law. So from this, we can conclude that in order to obey the law, the mass of the middle element and the mean of the first and the third element should be equal or approximately equal. Now, we all know that the law had failed. This is because the law had some limitations. So now let us learn the limitations of Dobereiner's law of triads. First, only a few triads were identified. Second, newly discovered elements and several of the known elements did not fit in any of the triads. Due to these reasons, the law had failed. So the scientist needed to find some other way in which all the elements can be classified. 
The next scientist who came forward is Newlands and he came up with his theory of Newlands law of octaves. This theory I will be explaining you in my next video. So I hope you liked this video of Dobereiner's law of triads. If you liked my video, please smash out the like button. If you have any suggestions or any queries or in, if you need more example of triads, please comment right below. Thank you for giving me all your time. I hope everyone enjoyed. Thank you.